We have some unfinished business when it comes to insane membrane keyboards. The Wacky World of Multimedia J. For those of you who don't get my joke, insane membrane keyboards is my little nickname for membrane keyboards. It's a reference to an old 90s rap song by Cypress Hill, Insane in the Membrane. <laughs> so I kind of adopted that as a joke about membrane keyboards because of all the elitism that exists out there. There is so much elitism out there, even to the point where I think there's an entire group of people that won't even consider you a real PC gamer if you use a membrane keyboard. Quite frankly, I don't have a problem with membrane keyboards. This is my ASIO Levitron L70. I picked it up about three years ago, and it's been my keyboard of choice for the last three years, and it's a membrane keyboard. So I understand the criticism regarding membrane keyboards. It is a newer technology. It came out in the 90s. It cut costs, and in some ways it cut corners. I've used some pretty painful membrane keyboards before that were so incredibly mushy that they actually made your fingers hurt after a full day of typing with code and stuff. But there are some membrane keyboards out there where manufacturers are acknowledging that membrane has its issues, and they're actually working on trying to make things a little bit better. One of the things related to membrane keyboards, though, is of course, besides the mushiness and stuff, you can get some decent sounding keys and whatnot. With this, ASIO, with this ASIO keyboard specifically, it's a Levitron L70, it's a membrane keyboard. It took a very long time to break in compared to other keyboards that I've had, but most of the other keyboards that I've had have been like $20 Microsofts or something. This thing was a little bit mushy when I first got it, but I say nowadays it's pretty decent for a membrane. Of course, if you go low-end enough with a membrane keyboard, you essentially have a button board instead of a keyboard, because that's basically what membranes are, is they're buttons. Which is why I specifically bring up that it is, which is why I joke about insane membrane keyboards because, you know, you talk about uh, button boards, membrane keyboards, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? If mechanical keyboards are the solution to everybody's problems, like some people say they are, why do we not have mechanical game controllers? That's right, folks. The very same membrane rubber dome technology that you'll find in a membrane keyboard is also found in your video game controllers. And quite frankly, I am happy when I encounter a controller that doesn't go click, 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 or clack, clack, clack every single time I press a button. So yes, game controllers run off of membrane technology. Many calculators run off of membrane technology. It's funny, you know, this elitism about membrane keyboards and, oh, yeah, membrane, bleh, get a real keyboard. It's funny how mechanical versus membrane only matters with keyboards, and it literally doesn't matter anywhere else. <laughs> you don't have people crying about game controllers using membrane technology, or calculators, or other things with buttons using membrane and stuff. It's only people that use, like, 90s or 80s keyboards with mechanical stuff in them that want all that to come back. So in a sense, you could say they're computer boomers or something, <laughs> trying to get all the youngins to go along with the way things were in the good old days. Well. Anyways, we're going to talk about the L70 Levitron, and of course I did manage to pick up this beast, which we will then set up to take mechanical keyboards for a spin, finally. But first, the Levitron L70. So here is the Levitron in its natural habitat, all lit up in blue, and it even has a volume knob to make it real easy to adjust the volume. That's something that was on my original HP keyboard with my original HP back in college. It was great to run into that again. But everything matches, and of course when gaming mode is activated with the lights and everything's blue, everything is all blue Tron style and stuff like that. In terms of what it sounds like...
what can I say? It's a membrane keyboard. It's going to sound like a membrane keyboard. It's going to feel like a membrane keyboard. But at least after it's broken in, it's not as mushy as it used to be. Took a while, but this is actually a real gaming keyboard, unlike the $20 office keyboards I used to use. So it actually has some anti-ghosting. So if you hit multiple keys at once in a video game, they all still register. So it also fits the lighting and the other stuff and has the volume knobs. So these Levitrons are still out there too. You just have to buy them nowadays through a, a third party logistics supplier or something like that. Because I think ASIO is actually getting out of the, the industry or whatnot. And they're just doing specialty keyboards to make your computer sound more like, you know, look more like a typewriter or something. But I don't see as much of ASIO gear with gaming anymore. So I'm guessing they're kind of on their way out. But these old Levitrons are still out there. And they've got the volume knob. So game's a little too loud. I'll just reach over and turn it down. Simple as that. There are little volume things you roll nowadays, but something about a good old-fashioned knob makes it really fun. And so here we are with ESO all fired up, and this is the part where membrane keyboards really shine. Yeah, sure, they're not as good to type on, but because they're essentially video game controllers shaped like keyboards, when you're using them as a video game controller, their silence is incredible. Maybe not so much in faster paced games like shooters where you're slamming buttons all over the place, but in something like Elder Scrolls Online or an MMO where you're just running around and maybe doing some mouse clicking here and there, you don't hear click and clack, click and clack every single time you hit a button. This also applies to the space bar as well, so when you jump, it's all quiet and you can't hear it. Let's take the game out of the equation and completely mute everything. Some button noise from touching the buttons, of course. But none of the clicks and clacks you might hear from some Twitch streamers who have mechanical keyboards. And maybe they don't know how to take their microphone out of omnidirectional mode, or maybe they just have a really loud blue keyboard or something with blue switches. So you're trying to watch them stream, and you see the video game going, but literally every single time they do anything, click, 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 clack, 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 clack. <laughs> so that's the thing. Mechanical keyboards, they're, they can be more fun to type on, and if you're the kind of person who's used to them, to where you don't bottom out every single key, you can actually type faster with them. But when it's time for the keyboard to do double duty as a video game controller, that's where you can run into trouble with all the extra noise that mechanical keyboards bring to the, bring to the table. So, without further ado, let's go check out the ASIO Levitron's mechanical big brother. This is the membrane version. I've been using it since 2017. I really don't understand why I didn't just, um, why I didn't make a video on this when I first got it. Somehow it slipped through the cracks. But now we've talked about the Levitron L70. Let's check out its mechanical big brother, which I was lucky to get in the first place because, of course, ASIO backing off on this stuff means that this mechanical keyboard was hard to find. Let's go check it out. Okay, it's time to take this thing out of the box here. This is the ASIO MGK L80 RGB. This keyboard has a couple of years on it, much like the Levitron, but I've liked keeping everything all ASIO stuff for the past several years and whatnot, so I figured if I was going to go mechanical, let's try this one out and try it out quickly during what's going on right now, because as ASIO backs out of this part of the business, these things are actually getting harder to find unless you go through resellers or price gougers or what have you. So I actually did some digging around and finally found this keyboard on Office Depot's website of all places. But it was the only place where I could still get it from a company firsthand at this point. Everyone else has gone to third party folks and the third party logistics folks are adding extra markup. So I didn't want to spend substantially above what these things usually go for for an old keyboard that's essentially been discontinued at this point. So let's get this thing out of the box. It's supposed to run off with Cherry MX brown switches, so more clack, less click. But we're going to try this out and see how it works. So when you get the big shiny slipcase off, you get to this, which then gives way to this. And it's all wrapped up and it's all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've proceeded with caution when it comes to mechanical keyboards because I know there are companies out there that attach the G word, gaming, to stuff, and then they crank the price on it. So I was trying to avoid some of that. That's one of the reasons why I've stuck with ASIO instead of going to something like Corsair or Razer or something like that. So let's get this thing out of all of its packaging and see what we have to play with here. And there it is, fully assembled, 
Oh, wait a minute. Not quite. There. <laughs> Now that the magnetic wrist rest is attached, it is fully assembled. This is actually an improvement over the membrane variant of this, because the membrane one just had a wrist rest that it connected via plastic, and the plastic eventually broke because plastic. But anyways, brown switches, and I checked in the manual, it actually is Kale Brown, not Cherry MX, so one of the competing companies. But still, brown switches, so clack, 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 instead of click, click, click. If I'm loud enough, I can drown out the people that are redlining their four-cylinders outside. <laughs> but that's one of the problems with mechanical keyboards, is they are mechanical. So, it's funny, you know, people talk about, Ugh, freaking rubber domes, I don't want rubber domes, I don't want membrane, I don't want this. And then you go online and you see accessory kits for mechanical keyboards that give you little rubber O-rings to quiet your keyboard down. Like, okay, you spent the money for a mechanical keyboard, and now you're trying to make it as quiet as a membrane keyboard? Whatever. So anyways, only requires one USB, so no pass-through port or anything. It is an older design, but at least the cable's braided. So this is RGB, so when we set it up, we're going to have to set it to blue to match everything. It's not going to be blue right out of the bat, like the membrane one, which is always blue. So volume knob, nice and solid, and you can press it to instantly mute the computer. So that'll be interesting. Some support for macro keys and Windows lock, and everything that was on the membrane version of this. Now let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison. Actually, no, let's try some typing first. See what all the hubbub's about. Yep, definitely the clack, clack, clack that I've come to associate with brown switches. I can see why typing is faster, though, because you don't have the resistance of the rubber in there, so you don't have the, the rubber membrane pressing back up against you, so you just press it down and that's it, so at the expense of a little bit of noise. Now, let's get rid of this, and we actually have the insane membrane variant right here. So, let's just rotate this, uh, can we get this in the shot? No, we're gonna have to reposition the spider tripod. Hold on a second. Okay, so we have insane membrane keyboard on the bottom and the mechanical keyboard up here, and we got them side by side for a side by side comparison. The eight, they're both ASIOs, and they're both from the same product family, releasing at roughly the same time. But the membrane Levitron L70 is actually a little bit bigger than its mechanical counterpart. And that's probably because you have a big piece of rubber inside that you have to have extra housing around to hold it in place, as opposed to just mechanical key switches. But let's compare the two. This is a nicely broken in membrane board. Perfectly fine once you break it in. But you can feel it gets soft on the bottom, even though the keys are broken in. You can still feel it gets soft on the bottom because you run up against the rubber, because membrane actually has rubber in it, unlike mechanical key switches. Bada bing, just you and slamming something against the board at the expense of a little bit more noise. Now, here's the interesting part. With all the screeching and hollering that happens on the internet when it comes to this whole thing with mechanical versus membrane keyboards, a very important thing to remember is that in today's wonderful world of everything running off of USB, there is absolutely nothing stopping you from having multiple keyboards plugged into the computer at the same time. So if you like the membrane when gaming because it's quieter, because you're using rubber and whatnot, as opposed to click, 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 clack, 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 click, 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 clack, 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 if you want to have one keyboard for gaming that's quieter and swap it on the fly with something that's better to type on if you don't mind the extra noise, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from doing that. As a matter of fact, even before I decided to satiate my curiosity about mechanical keyboards after all these years, my computer already had extra keyboards available. There it is, the Netflix keyboard. Little portable wireless Logitech thing. Oh yeah, this thing's plugged in and it's live. All I gotta do is turn it on. So I have the main keyboard for when I'm at the desk, and if I'm watching movies or playing music and I'm across the room, I can fire this thing up to change something on the fly without walking all the way back to the system. So, oh, 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 and uh, this is a membrane, laptop style. So, not all that great, but hey, it's uh, it's pretty decent to type on. It's actually less mushy than the ASIO. So, 
It's just not a gaming keyboard. I specifically went gaming mushy because of uh, things like you know go anti ghosting and other stuff. Where you can press multiple keys and have them all register. So enough messing around. Let's actually hook this sucker up. Give it its wrist rest. Where is its wrist rest? Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> I'll have to dig out where that went. But let's hook this thing back up and let's set it to blue so it matches the rest of my setup. Let's fire up ESO and do some typing with it. All right, everything's switched back to gaming mode. Let's plug in the beast. Ooh, it actually boots. Not something I usually expect from a keyboard. Oh, what is this? Rainbow? Uh-uh, no. Everything's gotta be blue over here. Let me go actually read the bleep bleep manual. <laughs> okay, finally, everything's set to deep blue to match the other equipment that's already the same color for my blue team setup. The only wild card here is these LEDs that do things like caps lock and some other stuff are always white no matter what, so that's the one wild exception, and they're awfully bright compared to the rest of the keyboard. But otherwise, we are good to go with this setup. I had to go into a custom mode, so function end, which then lets you change the color of the keys individually and set them all to blue instead of doing a color wave and then trying to stop it at the right spot. So this is good to go. Everything now matches. Ooh, and here's the kind of difference we're talking about here. We have the membrane and we have the mechanical side by side. And we can see that the extra housing required to house a membrane and keep it in the right spot is why the membrane keyboard is a little bit larger. So some cosmetic differences between the mechanical and the membrane variants of these old ASIO keyboards, but hey, pretty cool setup and everything matches for my blue team setup. I should probably also mention that the gaming mouse that comes with the Levitron combos is actually pretty good. So it's basically an IntelliMouse Explorer, but it's more like rubber and stuff, doesn't feel plasticky or anything, and it has a braided cable just like its mechanical brethren over here. Not so much the membrane keyboard though. All right, let's fire this thing up and let's take the new mechanical keyboard for a spin. Okay, camcorder let's play mode one last time. First we're gonna type something on YouTube and then we're gonna fire up ESO and see how this thing games both with and without computer audio in terms of the noise that it makes. For now though. <laughs> Uh, no. Uh -huh. Ooh, wait a minute. I want the window dot menu for smileys, which is a unique feature in Windows 10. <laughs> with a key placement for opening the smiley menu. <laughs> There's something different about this update, but nobody has any chance whatsoever of knowing what's different about it until they see my next Wacky World of Multimedia J. Sorry, no spoilers. <laughs> see what kind of comments or likes this gets. <laughs> Alright, let's fire up ESO. Okay, moment of truth time. This is with brown switches, mind you, so not totally clicky. However, yeah, every single time I press a button. Very similar to, very similar to the whole situation with the mechanicals and whatnot. I can softly push everything down though, so the noise is only if I'm really slamming the heck out of stuff. But let's take away the game audio with this handy dandy pressable volume knob to instantly mute the computer and. So, from a gaming perspective, I mean, you're still going to hear your mouse and everything, but from a gaming perspective, since I have non-clicky switches and I'm not using blue switches, ugh. <laughs> from a gaming perspective, since I am doing stuff like this, and you know, the, ex the noise, it's not so much that there's extra noise from using a mechanical keyboard, but the noise is just different. So, the keys rubbing around and on top of the rubber thing and whatnot on the membrane, would make different noises than what this thing's making, even when I try to be quiet. Let's try not being quiet. 
Yeah, it'll start sounding like I have a mechanical keyboard if I really start, you know, hamming things up a bit. But that's what those, that's what I don't get. You know, there's O-ring kits to quiet down mechanical keyboards out there. So don't those kind of reintroduce a feeling kind of like membrane when you're slamming up against something made out of rubber again when you're trying to type? So, yeah, I don't know. I think the, the best solution would be multiple keyboards. It's fully viable, especially with all the wireless stuff that's out there nowadays. You could just have something else you could swap in on the fly if you wanted something quieter or if you wanted something that's easier to type. So, people's, everybody's gaming setup is different. So, just listen a few more times to some of this noise. Well, I suppose it's better than having blue switches. Bring back the game noise. Crank it up. Let's go fight something. Oh, even better, it's storming out. So we'll do a, we'll fight some wolves with and without any uh, with and without game audio. So under normal circumstances, I mean, how annoying is it? pushing the heck out of the keys now, but I'm pressing three buttons at once. This is one of the things people look for a mechanical keyboard. Oops. <laughs> Heal that guy. Let's find something else to fight. This is Glenumbra, so it's not all that dangerous of an area. A public dungeon might have more monsters. I suppose I could get used to this. Let's go blow up some imps. Rolling over to the key next door helps too. Alright. Let's turn the sound all the way down and let's listen to the keyboard noise in a normal fight. So some of this, I think, is mitigated. Let's listen to this. So some of this, I think, is mitigated by the simple fact that a lot of times when you're playing a game, you're going to have some sound going, or you're going to be wearing a headset. And many gaming headsets out there are semi-closed. So the biggest issue is, do you want to be disturbing people in the middle of the night when the rest of the house is sleeping or something like that? So it's, of course, so get some folks to sleep with some fans for some background noise, and you know, that'll change pretty quickly. But I think that's really the issue here. And of course, when you're streaming, everything's quiet as well. So the big thing I've observed from Twitch streamers is that they often have a mechanical keyboard, often with blue switches, which are supposed to sound more like an old-fashioned IBM keyboard. <laughs> click, 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 click. But you'll have somebody with blue switches, and what they'll be doing is you'll hear it through their microphone. Of course, I don't know if there are some streamers out there who just aren't good with a blue Yeti, and they have it on the wrong pickup pattern, so they'll be running their microphone in omnidirectional mode <laughs> instead of... Uh, instead of uh, cardioid mode, which limits to directly in front of the sensor. So, well, let's take out this rogue here. Might help if I wasn't such a button masher with some of these abilities. Alright, put the sound back on. Whoops! Oh, didn't see that rabbit. <laughs> more stuff I can cook when I want to level my cooking skill. Boom! Shock it in, baby! <laughs> hey, what do you know? That random wolf had an epic shield. Okay, uh, because video games! Whatever. <laughs> Alright, that's enough of that.
Yeah, I'd say that the membrane keyboard probably made about as much noise as the brown keyboard when gaming. It just made different noises because of the nature of how this thing goes together. However, nothing wrong with an insane membrane keyboard. Not at all. Matter of fact, I would definitely consider this to be the best membrane keyboard I ever had out of the ones that I had. So, still going to be my keyboard of choice over on the membrane side of things. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff along those lines. So, the question now is, what happens to the Levitron L70? What happens to the insane membrane variant of the ASIO keyboard that I now have up in the front? Well, the project area, of course. I have another blue mouse that I can use with this, so everything will still match, and finally I'll have a light-up keyboard for the project area as well. Just gotta get a new monitor. I took the Samsung to be my screen number two for my streaming setup, so maybe an $80 Walmart monitor and see how see how far I can make one of those cheapo monitors go in today's day and age. So, yeah, I want to get the project area going again. We'll get a cheapo monitor to do all of that so everything can be matching Samsung up in the front. But for now, if you have an insane membrane keyboard, nothing wrong with membranes, they're just different. Some people just prefer the feel of a mechanical keyboard or they like flipping out switches or replacing keycaps, but that's all enthusiast stuff. It's too easy for enthusiasts to forget that there's an entire mainstream market out there that isn't going to care about some of the details that enthusiasts care about, like actuation force and tactile bumps and travel distance and things like that. Matter of fact, I don't care about most of that stuff either. I just wanted to satiate my curiosity about mechanical keyboards, gain their benefits for typing, and also have something that wasn't click, 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 clack, 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 clack all the time when trying to record something. I think I can get the noise output of those brown switches down to about what this old membrane thing did. It just made different noises that sounded different. So, without further ado, we have ourselves a new Project Area keyboard for now, and of course I've got more stuff to do later on. But for now, this has been a revisiting of the whole idea of insane membrane keyboards. Those of you that aren't familiar with the 90s reference, look for an old rap song from Cypress Hill called Insane in the Membrane or something along those lines. And, <laughs> come on, anybody who remembers 90s hip-hop knows Insane in the Membrane by now. You, there's no way you can't. So, <laughs> till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.